Well, hey guys, it's Mandy with Sweetly Home, and I am just really sorry about this angle. I think I've shared in a couple videos that my tripod is actually broken. Like, one of the legs um, won't stay locked in place, so it always kind of goes back together. Um, and so it it's unsteady. <laughs> and I'm way too afraid to drop my camera because it is the one of the most expensive things in my entire home. So yeah, um, so you got this goofy angle. I tried to stack it up on some boxes and some books and stuff in order to be a little bit more like eye level with you, but um, it's really rainy here today and I have to have the overhead light on and it was just all these horrible looking shadows on my face. So I can't win for trying, but um, I just, I wanted to go ahead and um, kind of film this video. I wanted to do just like an update video. Um, I feel like there's a ton of things to tell you about and I feel like every time I sit down to film a video I like to talk. I talk and talk and talk and then I have to cut out so much of the video and the video still ends up being 20 minutes long. Um, I posted on Instagram about it because it's the struggle is real y'all and uh, so many of you were like no we love to hear you and chat with you and stuff and y'all are so great. So I thought um, rather than just like filming a vlog and giving all of these updates, I would just do it all in one video. Um, many of you asked a lot of questions and then just some um, recent things have kind of transpired so I thought I'd just share them with you. So this is the kind of video that you can just listen to as you're like, you know, going about your... Oh man, my children are fighting. Any minute now, they're probably going to knock on the door. I'm in the homeschool room. I actually locked it, but they're going to come. I know. And I'm going to have to referee a fight. Um, so, okay, let's just start. So, happy fun news. We got a puppy. Um, her name is Maple. Uh, we are so excited about her. Um, I shared in a vlog recently about her, and I've shared a few photos on Instagram. Um, if you're new to my channel... We, my husband raises competition field trialing English Springer Spaniels. Um, we have so many dogs that come in and out of our life. I think, um, not counting puppies, since we've been married, which will be 11 years on October 13th, we've had 30 dogs that have come in and out of our life. And that's mainly because my husband is a really good dog trainer. He's made quite a name for himself. He's been in magazines. He um, knows like some of the really top like dog training people in the world. Um, as far as Springer Spaniels go, like he is just, he just has a name for himself. Um, and so we train a lot of dogs and we've imported dogs from England. Um, and uh, yeah, so we, we always have, we always have dogs. Um, and when we first started, we had two dogs, Tag and B. Um, and Tag was our first dog. He passed away a couple years ago. Um, and then B actually just recently passed away last month. She had a lot of, a lot of sad problems and it was really hard because she ended up becoming like the family dog. Like my, the extended family just loved her so much. Devastating when she passed away, like devastating. It was really hard. So... Um, when we first got B and Tag, um, Shane got like a couple more dogs and then he would sell them because people would want to buy them. Um, we've had dogs that have gone on to be bomb sniffing dogs and, um, like that are like hunting dogs for like special like, like clubs where people go and hunt and stuff and they're like, they're dogs there, like all kinds of things. So... Shane had told me not to get attached because the nature of the beast is that these dogs would come and go. And so after B, I didn't get attached to any dogs. Of course, love them. Like, we treat them so good. Um, but I just couldn't let myself get attached or my heart would be broken all the time. So um, we decided that we were ready for a family dog. And a dog that would just be with us till 
for years and years and years um, and that we could just love on and she'd probably do hunting because that's just what we do. Um, but she would be the family dog and so we ventured out and got um, a Labrador and she's not a yellow lab, she's actually a red lab but she's really light. She was the lightest one of her litter and we wanted a more red dog but she, we fell in love with her. She's so cute. We bought her from Texas um, and you know, we live in Canada so she flew into Buffalo and she picked her up and um, brought her into Canada. You have to go through kind of like you know, an import process or you pay, you know, duty and all that jazz. Um, but we love her. She's, I think, 13 or 14 weeks now. Um, she's becoming such a, like, a, excuse me, really great part of the family. The puppy stage, I find, is really hard. Um, I don't know. I'm not much of a puppy person, to be perfectly honest. I've had so many puppies that, um, a lot of the joy is lost on me because I'm the one cleaning up the messes and all of that. Um, and puppies, like, you know, they they like to chew and they like to get into things and they're not trained. And um, so, anyways, I'm not a huge puppy person. I know. It's, it's terrible to say. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is the matter with me? I don't know. Um, but she's wonderful and we just, we really, really enjoy her and um, she's settling in really good here. So... I'm excited about that. So, huh, um, what else? Um, homeschool's going pretty well. Colt hates school. Um, he's four going on five, and I really, uh, just go easy with him. My whole thing that I've come to learn is that kids are young. Like, he's four, and, you know, we're not doing, like, super formal school with him or anything. He sits with us for morning time and listens to stories and he colors and he um, kind of journals. Like I have um, journaling time with them where Aubrey draws a picture, writes like her feelings or a story or whatever and he draws a picture and then I dictate, you know, what he said. Um, and that's actually something that Aubrey used to do when she was in kindergarten. Uh, so I have her journals. So, um, yeah, but he just, the very first day, like the schooling that we're doing, we're doing the good and the beautiful. Um, had you ask the student, your child, uh, do you want to learn to read? And his answer was no. And I said, you don't want to learn to read? Kid loves to read books. He said, nope. <laughs> and he just... He just is not a big fan of school, but that's okay. We're, we're, he knows his colors and his shapes. We're just working on the alphabet and the sounds right now. Um, but he's a funny, he's a funny guy, but we're having, we're having a good time. Um, we're still, I feel like transitioning. I haven't got into a good routine yet. And I feel like it's because of pregnancy that sort of derailed me. And that's a terrible excuse, but that's what I'm using. Um, I'm just having a harder time, um, getting up and going in the morning. I need to rework my whole morning routine um, to just get up before my kids and be ready for the day and start our day much earlier than we have been. But we're on track. We're doing really good. But um, I have a picture of what I think our schooling will look like, and it's not quite meeting that right now. And I think I want it to meet that a whole lot more than it is. But Aubrey's doing amazing. She loves school. She is just... I think she's going to be a learner for life. I'm someone who loves to learn, and I think that um, she's that way too. And Shane's the same way. He loves to learn, um, and I think she's going to be a lifelong learner, which is really awesome. So, um, oh, what else is going on? Um, Shane came home um, a little over a week ago, maybe a week and a half, two weeks at this point. Well, he came home two weeks ago. He was home for about a week. We hadn't seen him since the beginning of June. Um, in fact, I hadn't even seen him since becoming pregnant. <laughs> I mean, TMI, I guess, but, like, I hadn't seen him for this whole pregnancy. Um, and it was really good to have him home. It's, we're just, we're really ready for him to be home. He's, if you're, again, new to my channel, um, my husband went away for work uh, January 14th, and he was home for two months on a layoff, 
and then got called back uh, May 14th and he's been gone ever since. Um, he came home at the beginning of June for a few days um, on a leave of absence to see us and then he came home um, when we had to put B down but he was home for a total of like three days and that included like the day he got here, the day we put B down and the day he left. So it wasn't really and it was just a painful time. So um, he came home like a week or two after that and then um, we got to see him a little bit longer, but the time is really jam-packed, and he works third shift, so it takes him a couple days to adjust to being on day shift, um, and so I feel like the first day or two that he's home, he's sleeping most of the time, which I don't fault him at all, like, <laughs> having to switch all that, um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's been good with him being away, um, I have just been way easier on myself because I realized like apart from actually having to go and do a job um, outside of the home, I feel like homeschooling is sort of my job and I know that doesn't compare to an actual job, but um, it is a full-time commitment. Um, but I, a lot of times I do feel like a single mom um, and I really don't compare. I have single moms in my life so I know like what I'm walking through is not at all what they are actually going through, but I don't have the helping hands, um, and I'm doing it all on my own right now, except for earning the money. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's just really tough, and so I've just been easy on myself, um, and especially with pregnancy, um, I just, I let myself nap and I let myself rest and I'll do stuff for a little bit and then I'll go rest and I'll just, I'm just taking it easy on myself. And my kids are at the age, they're seven and four, um, seven and a half, four and a half. So they're like on the back half of, you know, going into a new age level. Um, but they play really well independently and, um, they play really well together. So that's been kind of nice. I have been afforded the opportunity to be able to take a quick nap. Like I don't sleep for an hour. It's like half hour max usually. Um, but you know, I can. So anyways, we're just, we're ready for him to come home. The hope is that he'll be done October 12th. Um, but the end date has shifted several times with this job. So there is no actual set date yet. Um, we will be going away, um, in a couple weeks. I, I can't even remember the date off the top of my head, but we're going to Nova Scotia and I've never been to Nova Scotia. I've never actually been out of Ontario. So I'm really excited to go to Nova Scotia. It's a big dog trial that we're actually going to. The whole family's going to go, um, and of course Maple and our other dogs we have. Uh, so everybody's coming and we're excited. I don't even know where in Nova Scotia we're going. Um, it's probably not going to be any place super populated because it's a, it's a field trial um, and it needs to be in the country. <laughs> um, but the hope is that we're actually going to be able to go to PEI, P Prince Edward Island. I wanted to go there since I was a kid. So hopefully we'll get to do that, but we're really excited. So the hope is that Shane will not have to go back to work after that trip. So that's the hope. But we never know. He could be there till December, like truthfully. So yeah, um, what else? So we know that we're gonna be walking to into a season in the next little while of going into a layoff. Um, okay, let me, let me back that up a sec. A lot of you have asked what my husband does for work. Um, he is a plumber and he is a steam fitter, plumber steam fitter. Um, he is the highest certification in Canada that you can go. He is phenomenal at his job. He often gets name hired. Um, he just is really good at what he does. He does not do residential plumbing, so he doesn't necessarily go into people's homes and like take care of their plumbing issues, though sometimes he does that to help people out, but that's not his job. He works uh, with industrial plumbing. So um, when the mines around here have shutdowns, um, which basically means the mine shut shuts down and the workers take a break and then other crews go in and service the mine and stuff like that, 
um, he does that kind of work. Like he, one of his last jobs when he was actually home working, um, he had to work in a big acid tank. He had to wear like special suits um, and he had to do work on the piping for the acid tank. And it was such a dangerous job that they actually had spotters that would watch them from like kind of up above to make sure that they were safe and that they were okay and that they weren't like getting knocked out by fumes or getting chemical burns and all kinds of stuff like that. So um, he's he helped build um, our hospital. Um, he works like um, in a like when they're building new builds, like apartment buildings. Um, He'll help like lay plumbing and pipe work and stuff for that. Um, right now, I don't know what job he's quite on. It has something to do with, I don't know, a pipeline or something. Um, I don't really quite know. <laughs> but he's eight hours away, so that stinks. But that's what he does, and it's contract work. So once the contract is up, the job is over with, and he just has to wait for the next job. So it's kind of like a feast or famine sort of work life which stinks but we've now are 11 years into this and we've come to know you know you just you set money aside and you stay prepared and if you have like any debt you pay off the debt when you're working and you do try really hard not to put um debt on when you're not working um but yeah so part of that process is um well I'll I'm starting to really make sure that our pantry is stocked up um, and just various things that we will have on hand for a layoff because we know what's coming and um, you know I don't work um, I'm a stay-at-home mom and our life has been able we've had to sacrifice huge to make that happen but we've built that into our life um, and yeah, so there isn't a lot of prospect for work for him when he does come home, like none at all, which is why he's away working. Uh, but you never know. God's good. And um, it'll be the nice thing is, is that when he's working, he is honestly usually working seven days a week. Um, and it is like go, 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 like long hours, often overtime, like it's crazy. So when he's off, it's really a chance for us to connect as a family and just be together. And then with him being gone most of the entire year, it's going to be so good to have him home and just uh, not have to worry about anything in regards to work. So anyways, that's what he does. That's a uh, little bit about the layoff planning. I did have a video about layoff planning. Um last year I'm guessing but I think I'm going to do that again uh and my hope is to actually film that like within the next day or two so anyways and while I'm talking about filming let me know if you have any video requests I have ideas of things that I want to do um things that uh have been in my mind for like ever but I've just never quite done them but I would love to hear what you guys would like to see um and also speaking of videoing, I'm planning to do Vlogtober. So Vlogtober is when you vlog every day in October. I don't know if every single video will be a vlog or if some will be a sit down, but I do plan to do that because I, uh, we have fun things planned in October and I just, I don't know, I think it'll just be really good. The only problem is, is that this is my good camera and this is, um, it's like a Sony Handycam and right now it actually has to be plugged in to work the battery is not working so my hope is to get a new battery before that happens but it's not a good vlogging camera because it's big and heavy um but my and my vlogging camera is terrible so i don't know how that's all gonna play out but hopefully it will play out really well my i'm hoping to get a good vlogging camera um for christmas that's my my one wish so we'll see. Um, what else? So I'll update you about the pregnancy. Um, I, oh, yeah, I'll update you about the pregnancy and then one more other health thing. Um, so things are going good. I will be 18 weeks on Sunday. I flip over a new week every Sunday. Um, yeah, things are good. I'm feeling some movement. Um, 
I have had some complications though and I think I mentioned it in the video that I was talking about my pregnancy like all the news kind of thing um since that video like I think I talked about how I went to the emergency room once well I've now been another time um so two times this pregnancy uh I've had at this point five ultrasounds um, and we have another one October 9th to find out what we're having. I can't wait. I can't wait. Let me know what you're thinking, boy or girl. Um, I'm, I'm on team girl. That's my guess. Um, so I've had a lot of bleeding, um, and a lot of clotting and it's horrifying to see. Um, like here's a TMI alert turn things off if you don't want to hear but um I'll give you a second okay uh I've had like toilets of blood like it is like gross and horrifying and all the things that you just don't want to see when you're pregnant um I had a formal ultrasound done at our hospital and they were looking for hemorrhage they were looking for I don't even know all what but all the things that they thought this bleeding could be attributed to weren't. The baby is perfectly fine. My placenta is perfectly fine. Um, everything is okay. And so the thought is that it's something with my cervix, I guess. Um, I've not had any internal exams done at this point. Um, every time that they've wanted to, they didn't want to irritate anything in hopes that the bleeding would kind of go away. But at this point, it hasn't. And it's kind of increased as of a couple days ago it's like really increased um to the point where I'm probably going to call my midwife today just to let her know what's going on um they had informed me that if it gets to the point where like you're bleeding through like a, a, a pad or like you're ble bleeding through a pad an hour you need to get to the emergency room right, right away um and that hasn't been the case which is so good <laughs> um but I am right now clotting and bleeding a lot and that sucks. Um, so they had wanted to get the OB on my team right away. They were like, you need to see somebody else besides us because midwives typically deal with um, low risk patients. So um, I am, I have to have a C-section. This will be my third C-section. I can't deliver babies naturally. Um, and so I'm using the surgeon that I did last time. He is wonderful, um, but very busy. And they tried to get me in with him and they explained the situation of everything that's going on. And I guess he didn't seem to think that I needed to be seen any earlier because I go at the end of October. So whether or not that's the first that they could get me in or what, I don't know, um, but I won't see him till then. So anyways, I feel fine. I have no cramping. Um, I like, I don't even know that I'm having this issue until it happens, like until I go to the bathroom, actually, <laughs> like I just, I feel so normal and so fine. So the hope is that everything's okay. Um, and that it's, you know, it's just like, I don't know, like, I don't know what they've called it. Like maybe there's like an abrasion or something on my cervix. I don't know. Like, ugh, I don't like talking about this stuff, but, um, I would cover your prayers like, uh, cause nothing triggers the bleeding either. I do so little in my life. I sit on my butt so much. Um, I walk a bit, like, to do some exercise, but I'm not lifting heavy things. Nothing. Like, there's nothing that I'm doing that would warrant this. So, um, it just comes and goes. So, anyways, I would appreciate your prayers about that. Hopefully, it'll just clear up on its own, and there's not a terrible problem happening with me. But I have been encouraged because I have heard lots of stories of women um, who said that they or someone that they know has had this happen as well. And they went on to have perfectly fine pregnancy and happy, healthy babies. So that's just just what I'm praying for. So um, what else? OK, so yesterday I saw the specialist. Um, 
So again, if you're new to my channel, uh, last fall I went into a clinic. I don't have a family doctor. Um, in Canada, everybody has access to healthcare, and so it's sometimes, in, at least in my area, it's really tough to get a family doctor. So I don't have anybody right now. Um, I was having some like weird pains, and so I went into the clinic. Um, I went. They sent me for an ultrasound. I walked out of the clinic like later on with like three diagnoses. Um, one was that my gallbladder needed removed. I ended up having like really huge stones. My gallbladder was twisted or was pinched and it was stuck to my stomach and it was like <laughs> weird and gross and needed removed. So I had that removed um, beginning of February. And they also discovered um, an adenoma and it has a specific name. I'm not going to you know, some, sometimes a girl needs a little privacy, but in, I have an adenoma and it is a very rare, only like 10% of the people in the world have this thing. Um, it's just so weird. Uh, so, um, and it's so uncommon that the doctor who was reading my results had to go look up what it was. And when I Googled, cause you know, Dr. Google, um, the only things I could find were how to read MRI results and medical journal articles about it. Like there's nothing <laughs> on this thing. But an adenoma is basically a tumor and it's a benign tumor, but they did have to do testing on it to make sure that it was benign. It's on my adrenal gland and the, uh, the fear would be that it would, um, cause my, uh, adrenal gland to produce more hormones and stuff like that. And I could contract, not contract, but I would have something uh, called Cushing's disease. Is it Cushing's? I think it's Cushing's. There's two different ones. There's Cushing's and then there's another one. And what I have would be one of them. <laughs> I don't have that. I don't have it. Um, so I did testing back in February as well. Like you had to get blood work and um, remove like a lot of foods from your body. Like you can eat tomatoes and vanilla and coffee and caffeine and all kinds of stuff. Um, and then you had to pee in a jug for a couple of days. <laughs> so I kind of documented that here on my channel, um, and nothing came back. So that was awesome. But the surgeon who did my gallbladder did want me to see a specialist. So he referred me to an endocrinologist and it wasn't until yesterday that I actually got to see him. Best doctor I've ever seen in my entire life. Like he was so friendly and so happy and just kind. And like we talked, like he had a perma smile on his face the whole time. It was just such a great experience. He was awesome. Um, he doesn't seem to think that there's anything wrong um, and that uh, I'm all, I'm fairly good or whatever. Um, I do have to go back um, once I have the baby because my hormones are out of whack at this point. Um, after I have the baby and life settles down and my hormones have kind of settled down, I'm into a routine and whatnot, and the baby's into a routine, I will have that testing again. So I'll go for blood work, and I'll go, you know, for the urine test thing, um, and then they'll see if there's anything that's elevated at that point. He doesn't believe that there will be, but it's just kind of a precautionary thing to make sure, and then he said, if nothing comes back, you know, we won't, we won't see you again. So he did actually check the back of my neck before I, before I left. He's like, let me check the back of your neck. And then he came around and he's like, do you bruise easily? And I said, yes, I do, actually. I'm like, I bruise incredibly easily. Uh, my nickname actually used to be Nanners because I bruised like a banana. And I didn't tell him this part, but because I feel like that kind of gave him a bit of the gist because whatever. But I used to bruise so bad. I Well, I did tell him this, but I would have bruises this big. A friend of mine, like, kicked me in the shin. Like, a friend of mine. Uh, we were... Long story. But he kicked me in the shin, and I had a bruise for months, and it was huge. And there was a knot in it. I ended up going to the doctor over it, um, because it wasn't going away. And they just said, oh, it's not broken. I'm like, I didn't think it was broken, but anyways, huge 
crazy bruising but um so he said that that could be because my cortisol levels are high and he said that is just the one thing that they would look for with that testing but everything is seems fine now and I don't seem to have any problems with anything so it's all good in the head which is so so good right so good um I think that's about it guys. I feel like I don't know how long this video is at this point, but I've talked a lot. I'm sure it's 20 minutes at least. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot of things to chew on, lots of things that are going on in my world. Um, but for the most part, we're doing really well. And um, it is cold here. I'm in long sleeves. It's rainy. We're down into the 50s. Um, sometimes the nights get down into the upper 30s. Uh, fall is officially here. The leaves are changing and it is like awesome. It's so awesome. But I have a feeling that winter will come early for us um, and it's probably going to be a cold winter. And when I say cold winter, winters for us, last year they had a recorded temperature of minus 40 and at minus 40 Celsius and Fahrenheit equal out. And that was not with the wind chill. And the wind chill can get us down to like minus 50. So it's insane, insane. There's that. Okay, I hope you guys have um, a good day. Just leave me comments down below. I love, love, love talking to you guys. Um, I know sometimes it takes me a day or two or three or four to get back to you. Sometimes a week. Uh, that's just life. But I do like to respond to everybody because it just means a lot that you took some time out to chat with me. So Anyways, I will talk to you guys later, and yeah, okay, bye.